Hi, my name is Joe. I'm a surfer from California, and I've been surfing for about 10 years of my life. For the past few months, I've been having a lot of ear pains, and I've been getting a lot of water stuck in my ears. Uh, I recently found out from my doctor that I have a condition called surfer's ear, and I wanted to find out more information about what surfer's ear is, so I tracked down Dr. Hetzler, who might be one of the world's best doctors when it comes to surfer's ear surgery, to ask him some more questions about it. So surfer's ear is basically bone growths that occur in the ear canal in response to typically cold water exposure. And the term surfer's ear came because it's so common in surfers, and just dipping in and out of cold water stimulates this process. Yeah, so, so the typical symptoms of surfer ear, usually the first thing people would notice is water tending to get stuck in the ear. Because as things narrow, it creates like a speed bump or a dam, and water can get stuck behind that area and not flow out easily. And then as things progress from there, if the water sits long enough, it might cause an infection, so it would be pain, and if the skin swells, it can block the hearing. Here are some samples he gave me showing what a normal ear canal would look like on the left. And on the right, we get a good look at an ear canal with some bone growth during the beginning stage of surfer's ear. I had Dr. Hetzler look into my ears and I found out that about 95% of my ear is actually closed due to this condition. One of the statistics I've heard, it takes about 3,000 hours of exposure to water colder than 68 degrees for this to become a real problem. And when we remove the bone and look at it in cross-section, it looks like an onion. It looks like wood grain. It has layer upon layer upon layer that forms as a response to that. And there's no place else in the body where this really occurs because every place else has more insulation. And there's no place else that has, I mean, this is literally paper thin down inside. The, the farther you go in the ear canal, the thinner it becomes, but it's literally paper thin down inside there. It has no insulation whatsoever. There's no fat down in there. Basically, when I was 15, I thought I had a basic ear infection. I went to the doctors, get checked out and I got told I had surfers ear quite bad as well um, and I just thought well I've got to sort something out I don't want to end up having an operation at like 17, 18 you know yeah every time I surf I'm always wearing earplugs and um, just making sure that I can prevent the well prevent the surfers ear from developing anymore um, and I advise anyone that's going to do surfing to wear earplugs as much as possible and just try to prevent this nasty sort of um, infection almost from anyone else getting it. The traditional method to operate for surfer's ear requires cutting the back of the ear to flap the ear open so that the surgeon can remove the bone with a drill. That sounds pretty gnarly. Then Dr. Hetzler shared that he had pioneered a new method for his surgery which seems much less brutal. He doesn't have to cut open the back of the ear. Instead he used these chisels to remove the bone by operating straight into the ear canal. The best advice that he gave me to prevent further damage up until my surgery is to start wearing earplugs when I surf. Wear your earplugs, protect your ears, avoid surgery, avoid hearing loss.